gonna stay the, are you gonna stay for the full meeting of Athena? I'm gonna stay on. I'm I'm trying to get the council meeting posted, so I'll be listening with half my brain. Okay. But if, if you need you something, I'm here. If you want to make me host it in case you need to get off, you can. Um, I will around yes, I will before I hop off. Or co-host. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is uh March 14th, and this is the Joint Capital Committee. And uh, seeing that we have a quorum, I will call the meeting to order. And the first thing I need to do is make sure um, all the committee members can hear and be heard. So I'll just call out the names as I see them on the screen. Um, Bob Hegner. Yes, present. Eugene Goffredo. Yes. Sarah. Here. Jennifer. Present. Lee. Yes. And I think that's it. Um, so, um, as you know, we we all we have on our agenda today the DPW projects and what is something is called facilities, and that's basically town buildings um, broadly. So I am going to turn it over to um, Sandy if you want to say anything before it looks like Guilford is here. So we would go through the DPW projects first, I think. And you also, Sandy sent us a uh, summary larger table. So I didn't know whether you wanted to talk about that at all, Sandy, um, now, or you wanna wait till we do go through the projects? I was thinking maybe we'd wait until we go through the projects so that the departments who are here to speak don't have to wait around. Okay then I think we will start with Guilford. And just um, in, in the past, the way we've done this is similar to what you heard last week where uh, the, the, the department presents the projects um, in as much detail or as little more summary detail. And then we ask questions, make comments. Um, and uh, Sarah volunteered to be a note taker last, a minute taker, and Eugene did fantastic. I, very. I said, I said not till the 21st, though, not today. Not today. So do we need a Nate note taker for today, then. We need someone to take minutes. We need a volunteer. And Jean, Eugene already did it once. And we have a, um, It it's fairly simple in that, there is a Zoom recording you get right away. We have a Word document we can send that already kind of sets it up and then you just create it for a day. And Eugene did more detailed minutes than we often do in terms of who said what, but he captured, he, he thoroughly captured them. So I'm I'm stalling just till I see a volunteer. <laughs> Kathy, I just want to say that um, the two school committee people here have a meeting at 6.30. So okay. um, it's just really tight. It's tight tonight. All right. I'm, I'm happy to take minutes because I'll just say you approved everything. <laughs> well, we're, we're not. There's no, This isn't decision time. Um, all right. So I don't want to stall, but we do need a minute taker. So I, what I'm going to do is I'll volunteer for this time. Um, I don't usually have to do it, but I'm quick at minutes and I'm just going to use the Zoom because I clearly can't take minutes while chairing. So moving on to Guilford. Yeah, good afternoon. So um, I'm just going to read, go through my spreadsheet of projects we have. Um, there's a lot of stuff we do every year. Um, there's a lot of stuff we do every year. It's not on here, but uh, we were told this was going to be a, a non non vehicle year. So there's not much in vehicles, um, which is okay because we haven't got the vehicles we ordered last last time because it takes about 18 months to get vehicles. Um, so, um, okay. So I'll start off the, I do not know what, how you have it in order, but um, in my order, um, is the transportation plan. This is a $50,000 we asked for. We've been asking for it for every year and we use it to do different different things. This year we've used it to fund the, uh, the intersection or the neighborhood study at Cushman. And we're also using some of it to, st to fund the studies for Fort River School, the traffic studies. Um, so that's what this is kind of used for. 
um, storm water management program is basically the same thing. Um, we're required by federal law, we have a permit, a stormwater permit, and we're required to do certain things. Uh, next year, FY25, we actually have to do a little more. We have to do some more testing and we actually have to do some more um, physical corrections when we do the testing. So we've actually asked this year for $100,000 um, and we'll be spending that on those stormwater related items. Um, we ask, every year we ask for money to fix the sidewalks around town. We ask for $50,000. Usually what happens is that's increased somewhere along the line as you got, as the committee, sorry, as the committee looks at what money is available, but we always at least ask for $50,000. We did the sidewalks on West Street last year from Pomeroy to um, Crocker Farm. That was the, big, was the biggest project we did last year. We did a section of sidewalk from Pine Street to just a little piece on Pine Street to a little brook uh, around Fisher Street. And then um, there was a couple more little sidewalk projects we did, but those are the biggest two. Um, then we have our road resurfacing. This is usually what comes from the town. We ask for a little bit of money every year for road resurfacing. Uh, we usually ask for $500,000 and we've always, we've re recently got 500 or more. It's kind of does the same thing as like the sidewalks. You add more if you have it. Um, uh, we, Delford, I'm going to um, put that stuff up on the screen so people can see it. How's that? You're looking at the same thing here. Can you see the same thing? Yep. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So the next thing is the 450000 we've asked for to... Uh, finished the design of the North Amherst intersection. This is the Pine Meadow, North Pleasant, and Sunderland Road intersections. So we want to try to wrap that up and get something going with a project soon to fix that intersection. So that's 450. The um the next one is our Chapter 90 money, which it comes from the state, and it was just it's just something we put in here to let you know we do get 800. And forty-one thousand dollars from the state every year for Chapter Ninety work, which is just road work. It can be road resurfacing, road re reclamation. It can be traffic lights. It can be um, guardrail. Anything to do with the roads. That's what we use spend this money on. Uh, the next thing down was we have twelve thousand dollars for street relamping, which this is the money we use for in case we have a lights go out and we need to buy parts and pieces to uh, fix those. We do every other year, we put in $12,000 for this type of type of money. Oh, and, and then the, actually I did it out of order. So under, after chapter 90, you have a hundred thousand dollars. This is money that's in addition to the money that was approved last year to upgrade traffic signals for ADA accessibility. Um, we got the study done. The, we needed probably another $100,000 plus what's left over from last year to actually purchase all the parts and pieces and install them. So this is $100,000 is for that money and the Disabilities Access Committee um, was the sponsor for that project last year and hopefully we did moving forward. Um, on your list, we have the $12,000 for relamping, which I was I told you about already. Um, the next is $80,000, which is part of the field maintenance um, package we put together last year. There was a sum of money for approved last year for groomer, um, groomer, aerator, a couple other pieces of equipment that we said we needed to keep the fields maintained. And then we had a second batch of money, which is this $80,000, um, which is for some more specific equipment for the turf management, the grass management um, on the fields we have in town. And that's what this 80,000 is. Um, we do have to replace one of our mowers in the tree and grounds. That's the $20,000. These are these mowers. We have about four of them and we replace, uh, we replace one, at least one of them every two years. So we keep the fleet moving. Okay. Um, every two years we request, uh, well, every year we request money for tree removal support. And every other year, we add a little extra $20,000 to it to fund having a company come in and remove or grind the stumps and the trees that we can't get rid of. 
uh, a large butt logs. We either have to pay to take them to Wagner or we hire a company to come in, which is usually Wagner and grind them up. And then we use the wood chips for other things. So this year we're asking for the $40,000. Usually it's about $20,000 is used for crane, renting a crane to do the big tree removal. And then the other 20 is used for the processing the chips to be reused or getting rid of the material. The last item we have is the sidewalk snow plow. There's $250,000 here to replace our one of our sidewalk snow plows. Um, we have one dedicated sidewalk snow plow right now or machine that's for that purpose. And we've been using a bunch of smaller equipment that's multi-purpose. Um, we're finding that the multi-purpose equipment is not um, working as well. So we have mm -hmm. a, we want to replace one of them with a full scale sidewalk snow plow machine. Um, and that's all we're asking for this year, a really small amount um, compared to normal years. So, uh, Sarah, I, I will just call on people as I see the hands go up. Thank you. Um, so these, a, a couple of questions. The skag mower that you say you replace, you try to replace them every two years. I mean, replace one every two years. How many do you have? I I hope, you know, they have a long life. We have four. So they're only good for eight years? Yeah, they do not have a long, very long life. We we mow, once we start mowing, we mow pretty much every day in the mowing season. So they, they get worn out pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. All right. And then my, my other question is about the sidewalk plow, because that seems like a huge amount of money for us to plow something that's only about six feet wide. I mean, how much does a full road plow plow cost? Well, that's uh, right now. Let's see if you had another one hundred fifty thousand dollars, you get a large snow snow plow truck and a plow. And and this would be one of two. How many or just one? The only we, one. We would have two that are. Two that are meant to be snow plow or um, sidewalk snow plows. And then we still would have one other piece of equipment that we use that's a multi purpose piece of equipment. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Bob? Yeah, just uh, Guilford, just to follow up, could you re explain that the, the side? Are you replacing one with three? One a sidewalk plow with three pieces of equipment? No, no. We, we, no. We're replacing one existing multi-purpose piece of equipment with a, a machine that's made for snow plow and sidewalk plowing. And that's really 250 huh? <laughs> the, the last one we bought was 190 Wow. So I, I see Jean and Sarah's hand went back up. I have several. I, I'm going to follow everybody else. So, Jean. Hi, Guilford. This is uh, this is Jean, sorry. Right. Oh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Good. Um, just going back to the, the sidewalk plastic that's opened up a lot of people's eyes. <laughs> what's the usage that you had this last snow season, assuming that it's almost over, you know, say the end of this month? How many um, times were the, the current equipment used? This, this year, we actually ended up using the dedicated snow plow 100% of the time, and we uh, we didn't use the other pieces as much um, because the other the other pieces don't do as well. So we had only had one machine out there. Um, what we find is if we don't have two machines out there, we don't get it done as quickly as people want and as people, as people expect before school can start. Um, and, and that's really the driver for having two pieces of equipment is trying to get the snow removed in time for having clean sidewalks for walking to school and that type of events. You partially answered my part B was like, where is this actually used? I'm in South Amherst, we don't have sidewalks. So I was assuming this would be like downtown bus, other areas. Um, we have a list online that shows the sidewalks we go through once and then the sidewalks that are on in front of town property, we are supposed to maintain those. So we go back to those more often. Uh, we do the sidewalk on West Street all the way to Hampshire College and um, Atkins. Um, okay. We actually do do a sidewalk on Glendale. We do do a sidewalk on Wildflower. Um, so those are, and then we head to East Hadley Road. 
and that's probably all we do. That's all we do in um, South Amherst. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, so I, I'm going to continue on this one, and then I have comments on two others. So uh, before I go to the others, if anyone has others, um, if if we didn't, we're going to, we, the requests so far are over the amount of money we have, Guilford, um, which probably doesn't surprise you. Um, but, you know, if we didn't fund the sidewalk snow plow, um, the sidewalk plow, um, it sounds like the consequences you would have to potentially you would have to pull out some of the equipment you says doesn't do as good a job, but you could do some work with the other. Is is that true? That's true. We would. Okay. Then I'm going to focus on the other big one, the four hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the North Amherst intersection. I know this has been on hold for a couple of years, and I I'm going to repeat some of what I questions I had last time. My understanding, um, just to give people a little bit of a background, Guilford knows all of this, but we've gone to uh, the state a couple times, maybe three times, to do something on this intersection. And when we went, there a fair amount of work had been done on uh, what does this look like? What are some options? So I'm not sure how much... Um, detailed work needs to be done on the surveying of the intersection, the width of the street, because I have some diagrams that that was quite well displayed. Second, on the traffic, um, the we have some traffic studies that were done. They need to be updated, but we also installed something called a smart light that in theory can count. Um, it can count cars. And um, what I had heard is that we may or may not be capturing that information, but it has the capacity to do that. So my last comment on it is there's not agreement on what should be done for the intersection. Um, on a, Should it be a roundabout? There is some on rerouting some roads. So to me, it doesn't make sense to get to a more detailed design if there's not agreement. So it's not, and we desperately, by the way, Anyone who drives up here would love to get that intersection. It's not that we don't think this is a major um, of major concern. So I'm worried that the 450 wouldn't be well spent if there's not agreement and that we have some elements of it already. The, and that's that's my comments on that big that big one. And I guess the last is a question. When we did Pomeroy, when we did the roundabout and the intersection down there, we didn't have to first do a big study. We just applied for a large maps works grant. So if we have a general sense of what we want to do, do we have to do this level of work before we apply to the state? Because this isn't, just so everyone knows, this doesn't come near to enough to doing the intersection. It's, you know, the estimates are one and a half to more. So, so that's my question on that item. Let's see. Um, or comments, partly mm -hmm. more comments, right? <laughs> Maybe we should just leave them as comments. Okay. I mean, the money, the, the that was the number that was put together a while ago, um, several years ago, five years, three years ago, three three years ago. We put this um, uh, estimate together. Um, the the biggest thing we haven't done in the intersection or in the in the work area is wetland flagging and those type of things and wetland permitting. So part of that money is for wetland flagging and permitting and the final survey, which is from the library out towards the river where the work is in the riverfront. So it's a little different than working at Pomeroy. There's, there was no wetland issues at Pomeroy. So we didn't have to deal with that. Um, we, we do have a uh, uh, much more involved uh, neighborhood association in, in the North Amherst area. So we, we know we will spend some more time producing products and having to reproduce products at times. Um, we, we do have the traffic count information pretty much under control. Um, we actually upgraded the intersection 
with a, a device. It's a, it's a system called No Traffic. If you want to Google it later, it's called No Traffic. Uh, we have one installed here at this intersection. We're going to put two more down by Fort River. Um, it's an uh, AI-based um, system that can actually um, help control the patterns of traffic and it works really well. We've since we put it in at North Amherst, we haven't had as many complaints. It's actually seems to be working much better with this system, but it also counts everything, counts people and cars. Um, it does it with um, video detection, but it doesn't store. Well, we don't store the video detection. Um, so if you wanted to reduce the 450 a little bit, you probably could, um, but that's the number we had come up with a while back, and that's kind of the number we're just kind of staying with right now. So that's there is stuff that has to be done before we can move forward. Most of it is actually, like I said, most of us, a lot of it's wetland issues. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions on any, on any of the projects, Sarah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I can't see it now, but there were two lines for road repair and resurfacing from two funding sources. Do those two combined represent the total uh, funding that the town proposes to have for road repair for the next year? And how does uh, it compare to past years? Well, actually, the last two years, we've been getting a lot more money. The last three years, we've been putting a lot more money into it. Um, usually what happens, though, is that the money that you approve here won't be spent until actually calendar year 26 or 25. So this year, we'll, we've will we already started. We've bid the projects. We've awarded the contracts. We have already encumbered money that was approved last year um, to do that. So if there's any other money that shows up, um, Chapter 90, we got another piece of money from the state, um, which will be rolled into this. I forgot the name of it. I don't know. Sandy, do you remember what the name of it is? Um, I don't remember the title, but the state, the governor did. Put yeah, it's like money. Yeah, it's like another 200,000, I think. So that'll get rolled in. If we get any grants, like uh, if we get a MassWorks grant for something, um, which we're actually asking for a MassWorks grant on Amity Street and you drive, we'll roll that into this and we'll push all this money together and uh, keep paving. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, the other thing, uh, I mean, we'll see it on Monday night. Um, my understanding is the town manager is likely to propose using some of our remaining ARPA money toward roads. You know, it just that that hasn't appeared on a screen yet, but. Um, That's so, happened the last two years, actually. You know, that, that there's been some way of moving around because this we were yes yeah Guilford answered it we, we've been trying to get the number up um but the state number if you noticed across the line the state number just has been frozen it's not frozen like not keeping up with inflation it's literally the same every the same every year so it really doesn't keep up and it doesn't buy us very much and senate our our representatives understand that we're being underfunded for the amount of use of the roads um, that we have. So I, I think that I think our allotment went up to that number in 2005. Hmm. Yeah, the state just keeps putting in 200 million every year. And MMA has been arguing to move it up to 300 or something. But for reasons I don't understand, it just doesn't move. So I have one, not so much on the amount, because um, $50,000 for sidewalks is clearly doesn't do very much. But when you go out and do sidewalks, like it, 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 there's a section that was done up here that moved a sidewalk to a new location um, to so it could be widened. Um, and that I think cost, well, I should ask, did that cost the full 50,000 or not? Or did you do that? Because there was some road work were being done. You kind of explained it that you had some money in a road work project and you could just fold this in. Um, so, so 
Is it that you grab money from other places for for some sidewalk work? Um, we we do. I mean, um, we trade we. We take uh, we take the road money, and if we're doing some road work, we'll add sidewalk work to it if we want to need to, um, and then it kind of gets comes out as a project. Um, community community development block grant money has been used, like um, downtown on Kellogg Street. We use paving money for paving Kellogg Street because we got community development block grant to do the sidewalks, and if we did the sidewalks and didn't do the road, everybody'd be like, "What's wrong? This is not." We want a nice picture. We don't want bad and nice. We want nice everything. So that's how we kind of approach it. We do a we try to get the whole project done. Um, we have a CD, CDD, CDBG project in um, Southeast Street over by the old school coming up. We also have a water line and a sewer line that is um, being worked on over there. So there'll be water and sewer funds going into it as well. So depending on what we're working on is where we pull funds from and add to to make a complete project. Okay, I, I'm looking, I'm not seeing any other questions um, or comments on the list. Is, is that correct? I don't wanna overlook anyone. If, if that is true, then I think we can thank Guilford um, we went through a big list quickly. Thank you, Guilford. And we You're can wel we can welcome Jeremiah. Goodbye. And it looks like Dave Zomek has also joined us. So Um, Jeremiah, the the stage is yours. If if you if <laughs> you, you, you and and what what San, you can let us know how you want to go through it. What um, Sandy Pooler did for DPW was put up the list, and then mm -hmm. um, Gilbert talked to it. So I don't know how you wanted to present your projects. Um, sure, <laughs> uh, Sandy, do you have the um, PDF the uh, the slides. Um, did I no send that? Much. Oh, did you send it to Athena? Um, I or think I sent. Send it? I sent it to a a, a group. I can if, if you have them, Jeremiah. I can let you uh, allow you to share directly. I'm I'm not sure. Athena said that she might be often on the call, so I'm not sure she can hear. Okay. I don't. I don't have your slides. <laughs> I'm sorry, Je Jeremiah. I just. I haven't been on top of my email today, so I am just seeing your presentation now. I can share your slides for you. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Just give me a next slide when you're ready to. Okay, yeah, you can uh, jump through the next two. Yeah, and then the next one is, uh, so uh, the first up, it's probably in a different order. Um, uh, the all buildings, interior and exterior improvements. Um, this also includes uh, some ADA improvements. Um, <clears throat> I requested that it be increased up to the, the 200,000 and um, what I'd like to see is sort of consolidating some of the smaller um, specific projects that were called out and just put it in into this um, uh, sort of general uh, bu bucket of funds. Uh, so what I end up using this, this for is typically if there's anything in the buildings that that go go down uh, that's unforeseen uh, but also uh, things that we can start renovating um, we do have a lot of wear and tear on on various buildings um, this is just a, a restroom that that uh, eventually will, is going to get some uh, love um, Athena if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide it's, it's just um just to show you some examples, um, we have the parking garage needs glazing. Um, we have water issues in our in the head houses at the parking garage, reglazing all of 
this uh, this work will help keep that water out and and ultimately keep uh, keep our buildings in in much better condition. Uh, repairing masonry um, that's we have a lot of a lot of brick brick and uh, stone buildings uh, so that's a, a a constant for us um, that that um, masonry is sacrificial so eventually uh, we do need to get in there and address that uh, next slide Athena I think there's just some more, um, you, and and you, uh, New England. Um, you can see uh, uh, all the way on the right hand side a steel door. This is one of the doors that that uh, I had to replace over at the Amherst Police Department, and I have a number of doors actually over at the nor north north um, north station, the North Fire Station, that that have the same. So the they're on uh, grade. Uh, ground plane. So with with all the weather that uh, beats up against those doors, they eventually start to rot out and we need to get those those uh, replaced. So this this money helps me uh, take care of all of these projects. It also helps me extend some of these other specific projects. So there might be a project that we did, uh, say like the a sprinkler, the sprinkler project or the siding project over at North North um, North Station. Well, uh, I was able to use some of these this additional funds to upgrade the lighting uh, around the building to LED. So we can eliminate some of the, the old uh, metal halides, uh, upgrade it to LED, um, add uh, an upgraded sign to the, the face of the building. So that's where it has come in very handy. Um, so not, not, not only am I taking care of very specific projects, but also extending some of these projects and just making them much more complete. Uh, next slide. So all buildings, roof replacement. So this is a new one um, that's, I'm asking for um, quite a bit of money, but specific money to start addressing the the roofs on all of our town, town buildings. Um, we do have a lot of different types of buildings and a lot of different types of roof systems. And we really need to start looking at these building envelopes, making sure that we're weather tight and before, really before we, we start addressing some of the major mechanical needs inside the building. So if water's getting in, it's obviously going to deteriorate the, the structure of the building, but it also impacts the weatherization of the building and makes it less energy efficient. So if we can keep all their, our buildings dry, keep a, a good roof on it, then it, then it, it gives us a, a good clean building to then uh, push our, our, uh, our sustainability goals and, and make sure that we get our, our, uh, our, our equipment upgraded. So it's, it's really tr just trying to look at each of these pieces we we can't necessarily take take out a fifty year old uh, furnace and put in a brand new electric. I mean, we would save on on fossil fuels, but we would also just be spending on electricity uh, because our building envelopes can't handle it. So we're we're this this is really just to help dry in these envelopes so that every all, all these new measures that we take inside are going to be lasting. Um, so it just, as you can see, we have slate, uh, a number of our buildings that have slate are, are beginning to approach end of life. Now we've made uh, repairs on our slate in the past, but we really need to start systematically replacing the slate. So we may not be able to do an entire building in, in one year uh, with this funds, but we could take care of certain sides that might be a little bit more problematic. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, so just showing s uh, some more, you know, we have, uh, some town hall and you can see there's one sad tile on town hall there that's crooked and, and over this is the bangs where we have, um, a membrane roof, um, as well as a metal roof. So if we think about the banks community center, this is something I presented during the budget hearing. You can 
you can break up the Banks Community Center into three different sections. So we have one section that was was uh, roofed in 2017 with a product called EDPM. Then we have a, a big section that's from 2009, and then and that's EDPM. And then we have another smaller section that's was 2008, and it's TPO. They're all going to age a little bit differently. You know, they all have a, a slightly different life expectancy. So uh, I, I I was asking for for this 500 and and having that increase a little bit as we start to take uh, it take take that, those fundings and repair some of these spaces. Some of it we can do whole as a, the entire roof like we just did at, at the Amherst Police Department, but some areas we we may have to section off and just address certain sections per year. Oh, if you want to go to the next slide. Uh, APD chiller replacement. Uh, this one was on uh, a few years ago. Uh, the request was made for $450,000, which I received. So thank you. Um, we did bring in an engineering firm, uh, hired an engineering firm to design uh, some uh, bid documents and to provide some construction oversight for this project. Uh, when they came back with the estimate, um, the est estimate came in at nearly $1.2 million. So when, the, when that 450 was originally put on capital, it was several years ago. Um, it, and mm -hmm. Yes, things have gotten more expensive, but it was also an opportunity to help try pushing our climate action goals, or, or at least that's the way I saw it. I, we could replace this chiller for like kind and just get another a chiller unit similar to, to what's there. And it's already electrified um, and, and we would be able to cool the building but I thought it was a, a good opportunity to help reduce fossil fuels. If we were to replace this chiller with a heat pump chiller, that means that we could provide heating for much of the year as well. So if we're providing that heat with this system, as well as all of the cooling capacity, um, that would drastically reduce how much natural gas that we use in that building. Um, and if you remember our, our our boilers were replaced in 2019. They are very energy efficient. Um, so I wouldn't want them to go anywhere because they have a lot of life left in them. But this chiller is an opportunity to, to reduce our, our fuel usage even further. Um, so it does come at a, a quite a cost. Um, next slide. Uh, town hall flooring replacement. Um, uh, you could s just see there's a, a photo of uh, town hall uh, floor. So this one was up uh, up on our our, our five year capital plan, and it's it's come up for this year uh, to to fund some replacement of the town hall floor. Um, most of the building has this. Uh, it's it's called a VCT flooring tile. Um, so it's a glue down product, um, and it is from the last major renovation uh, that that was done at the town hall. Um, it does take a considerable amount of work. Um, so, you know, annually you're stripping it, you're waxing it, and you're maintaining it uh, quite often. So for from a labor standpoint, it takes a lot of work. Um, but you also can see that it is showing um, a, a, a lot of wear. We have all that cracking. Um, in some places, there's more chipping. Um, so when we can, we replace a, a tile or two just so we don't have those big chipped out sections. Uh, but I would love to, to be able to remove all of this product and put a more modern commercial product in. So it'd be like, uh, called a luxury vinyl tile, so an LVT. Uh, and these products don't need to be waxed. It's a non-wax floor. 
And what's great about it is we're reducing how much chemicals we're using in the building. So in, in that sort of chemical exposure. Um, so no more waxing, no more stripping, no more buffing. Um, so it's just dry mop, wet mop. And so that means that that's, that gives, that's time for my staff to do, uh, to care for the building in other, other manner. So it's, a uh, it'd be a, a great, great project. Uh, next slide. Uh, AFD North. Um, so this is this is me. I would say just trying to extend projects. I, I spent uh, quite a bit of time uh, over the past year at, at AFD North with the siding project and then a sprinkler project. Uh, and having done so much work, you you start to see how how worn and in uh, um, well loved <laughs> uh, some of the the, the various. Uh, uh, interior finishes are. And one of them is the carpet. I know the picture doesn't really show much of it, but, but there, there is, yeah, I could, I could have taken a scarier photo, I suppose, but essentially it's just a, a commercial broad loom carpet. Um, so it's a closed pile and, and it's, it's old. So it, it is, there's nothing left to it. Um, it, you can't, you can't even raise the pile enough to properly uh, clean and extract it anymore. That's kind of where we're at. So it's, we're, you're, you're basically walking on concrete at this point. Um, so by, if, if you were to, to fund this um, with that 60,000, I could take care of, I, I pretty sure of the whole building. So it would be a one-time expense uh, take care of the whole thing, modernize it. And, uh, um, and I would probably look to change some of those areas out, maybe take carpet out of certain areas, bring in an LVT. Again, it's easier. It, it wears, wears better and it's easy to clean and you don't have to worry about spillage. Uh, next slide. So AFD roof replacement. So this is this is also a, a sort of sp specific uh, project that spun off of uh, the sprinkler project. So as we were uh, doing the the sprinkler expansion system uh, over at North Fire, um, the second floor of the North Fire Station didn't have a fire suppression system. So um, over the Christmas or the, the holiday, I should say a holiday um, break for the students, uh, we were able to get in there and have our uh, fire suppression system uh, installed above ceiling in that. So now the building is 100% uh, covered. Uh, why we were pulling some of the tile down in that sloped area, you could see in the, in the middle of the photo where the, the uh, metal roof is, uh, a, the insulation was sprayed directly onto the underside of the roof, that roof system. Uh, where the roof is sort of that darker color, um, the metal roof is the darker color, most of that insulation has sheeted off and, and is no longer there. So we have a piece of tin <laughs> between the inside of the building, well, that drop ceiling too, and the elements. So it, that, that's going to really impact our, our uh, energy efficiency of the building. Um, the, the, that metal roof is also showing its age. Um, and a, a number of the areas where it's, it's the fasteners are, are uh, uh, put into the, the, the roof, it is sort of punched through the, the metal actual roof system and now created a little hole. So we've we've taken care of some of those and, and we've sort of patched it. But now when I look at it and go, okay, so we 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 need to re-insulate because and we also have a leaking roof, the whole thing needs to go. So the intent would be is so as soon as the weather is not is good to peel back that metal roof, insulate so not up against not up against the metal again, <laughs> and and then um, 
put a new metal roof on this, this section. Uh, next slide. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> uh, so the picture on the left-hand side shows you uh, the insulation that was blown on directly onto the underside of the, the metal roof. Um, you can see how it's it's fallen down. Uh, so it was it was looked like someone sheared a sheep up there. There was just big big chunks of it, uh, and the image on the on the right hand side is the new ceiling. So I I put that in as a it it's it's been a great improvement, and uh, we don't want to see that wrecked, and and that's some of the capital work. Uh, money funding at work right there and then the last piece is is the sustainability but i believe uh, stephanie will be speaking on that at hers but i like to always just put put it in there as just uh just so everyone knows that when when it comes to these the buildings and we're looking at the buildings that stephanie and i work work closely together because some of these projects when, when it's it may be mechanical but then we 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 were always sort of putting our heads together and going what can we do for energy and sustainability and how can we collaborate and, and find money um, to to make it a really complete project and i think that's it Questions, comments? Sarah. Yeah, I have a question about the vinyl tile um, replacement in Town Hall. Mm -hmm. How much of Town Hall has that? I mean, at least the public spaces, I, I, I know there, there's a lot of wood. So where is all this tile and will this replace all of it throughout the building? It, it will likely not replace all of it. So the that vinyl tile is in all of the office spaces, which would be quite a challenge. Uh, so um, for first floor back behind all the doors. Mm -hmm. um, so we know we have all that nice wood out in the, in the corridor, but behind all the doors is that VCT tile. Almost the entire second floor, except for the town room has the VCT tile. Um, and the mez is the same. Um, part of the stairwells going all the way down from the second floor to the basement has that, that that's uh, more public facing. So the front of the building, mm -hmm. and then there's a set of stairs on the back side of the building that's, you know, more for staff um, also has it as well. So the intent would be to, to take care of some of these areas um, so maybe more more public facing areas now, um, but then when we're looking at doing our energy our energy um, upgrades to the building, that it, it not now but maybe in the in the very near future, mm -hmm. that's when I'll I'll look to address some of these other areas because more than likely staff might have to be uh, shifted around. So it's a great opportunity to take care of those those then. So I would, I'd want to take care of more public facing areas. Thank you. I imagine they get the most wear too, but I'm not sure. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Bob, you're, you're muted. I have a question about the, the roof, all buildings roof replacement. I mean, we have 3.3 million over five years. Is that like deferred maintenance? I mean, why are we? Why are all the roofs suddenly needing attention? Um, in other words, it, it seems to me that a roof has a certain um, <clears throat> life lifespan, and that every so often you need to replace it. But it seems like we're replacing a lot over the next five years. So you, we want to replace a lot, and I'm wondering what what the timing is on that. Yeah, and and I th I think you know to to speak to that question is is I if we look at the buildings as as they are and and I'll, I'll bring up bangs again is is that building was already taken care of in part so certain areas were addressed and certain 
at, at certain times in, in the history. So, so I think, you know, the goal would be is to start addressing those as, as we go. Um, as far as slate, you know, some of the slate is in wonderful condition. Uh, t town, uh, I'll, I, I don't know. I don't want to retract that, but the, the slate holds up very well. Town, town hall slate is very hard. Uh, we're, we're likely to have get 170 to 200 years out of it. It's that's just the the type of slate it is. However, the slate over at the North Amherst School has already reached into life. That needs to be replaced, and that's something that I've asked in the past for. But that was a three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollar ask um, two years ago or three years ago. So those costs are going to increase. So I I know it seems like a lot of money. Um, but but I think that's that's the easiest way to sort of take care of these big ticket items in a meaningful way. Um, town hall all by itself, if we wanted to, uh, it, it would it would far exceed that five hundred thousand. So I think I think what what I would like to see happen is move away for some of these slate slate roofs. We've just been you know sort of. I, I like to say fixing teeth, you know, we fix a tooth here and there. We need to start systematically replacing the tile so that we're putting a tile up there that we're going to get another hundred years out of, not, not have this one new tile uh, uh, amongst a hundred year old roof system. So that, that's what I'd like to see is that we start taking care of. Um, and it's, it's just a very large expense. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to follow up on Bob's question a bit and maybe ask something a bit bro broader. And I know we won't look at all of this until we're through the full list, but if you had to reduce some of these in terms of what you think is the most urgent, um, could you live with less in the roof bucket? Um, so you've got a non-specified 500,000 in terms of what you would do in the next year with it. Um, and then, the so I'm gonna ask it in those terms. And I think a few things that were on a list have disappeared. So the bangs windows were on a list. There was a van on a list. So should we assume everything you just showed us is the current list? Is is that? Yeah, yeah. so I, I sent, I sent a, a, an update um, over to Jennifer and just ask that the the van uh, be moved to FY26. Okay. Uh, just, I, just, I just wanted to verify that. So, when, so Athena, yeah. if you can post the slide deck, we can kind of get the current list of projects. But so the question is then um, on the, I'm looking at the big ticket items, that's 500,000. Yep. The chiller replacement, I think what you told us is that a full system replacement is now in the 1.2 million and you have yep. 450 and that yep. gets rid of chiller and moves to a heat pump, moves into a new system. Yep. Um, my my question um, is on a, is there a heat pump technology that's sufficient for that big a building? Um, you know, on because some of them don't work that well in the cold weather. So, I mean, you'd need an industrial side and you slid over if it if we weren't replacing the whole system, if we were just replacing the chiller, what would the cost be? You know, I'm not saying that we we want to replace the existing one, but if we if we didn't have enough money this year and is it is it about to fall apart? So do we is this like it's in, in critical condition and we have to either buy one like it or, or move to whole systems. So that's the other one. So the two, could you live with something less on roof um, and uh, the chiller replacement, just focusing on the big ticket items? Um, as far as the roofs, I would say if we, if we reduce now, we would just be adding later. Um, and, and that's, I think that's the reality of it. And the, I, I, what I, my approach was, is to hopefully not scare 
scare the committee by say so if i if i said you know i i need i need to have bangs i know i keep using bangs but i need to have bangs taken care of this is going to cost me a million dollars that that's going to be staggering that that's going to be scary so what i'm saying is if i get 500 i can take care of certain sections of it and then the following year i could take care of another section that might be problematic Okay. So I, I just think that if we reduce the number, we're, I would just going to be adding it later. Um, as far as the chiller is concerned, I think the 450 that we had is, is, a, is probably on the light side now, uh, especially after, and un, you know, I, unfortunately I have to say, I, un, after uh, COVID, um, so much of the expenses have, have went up. Um, Chillers, chillers are, and any of that big equipment is made to order now. There is nothing sitting around. So it does take quite a long time to receive it. And the, just the cost of it has, has gone up. And also over the last couple of years, there has been some changes in the refrigerants. And that also has been changing some of the costs of, of these, uh, these items. Um, as far as the equipment now, it, it, it doesn't work. It's, it, we're not even in critical anymore. It's, it's, I, I can't see us putting any money. I, I won't, it would be fiscally irresponsible for us to put any more money into that, that equipment. Unfortunately, it is that it, it, it we're at that point. Um, we've made uh, repairs over the years, but we've just sort of met the end with it. Um, so we do need to do something. Um, and even with the funding that we have, uh, the the uh, thought was to 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 get some type of uh, portable temporary chiller to get us through this season, as we're we're working on the project. Oh, and uh, I guess I would just say like, oh, that's, that's, yeah, you're, the heat pump, the heat pump, yes. So if it's a heat pump chiller, you most certainly can. It has the capacity, the, the heating capacity uh, to produce enough uh, BTUs per hour on the heat side to heat the building. Uh, it will start to uh, lose efficiency as it drops down into those really cold, cold temperatures. Um, if you were to change the building to a full VRF system, so that's a you know variable um, uh, refrigerant uh, drive system or VF, it that has that may have the capacity to go to even colder, um, but to go full VRF for that building would probably cost three three and a half million, and it would and it would be very impactful. <laughs> Because you would you would be running refrigerant lines all throughout the building, it'd be it'd be difficult. I don't. I'm not seeing any. Thank you. I mean that <laughs> the numbers got bigger rather than smaller. But that's, that <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, thank you very much. Um, any other? questions on the piece the the one we had asked about last year when we first um, just so people know either last year or the year before was the first time this um, bundling of lots of yep. building exterior happened as a bucket and one of the things we asked as a committee is and I don't need it now that sort of uh, that there'd be some kind of report on what you did with the money I mean, because yep. rather than asking, tell us exactly what you're going to do, which doors, which windows, which, so it's, it's keeping a record that, um, cause I thought that was an innovation rather than looking at $10,000 and 15, you know, small amounts. So that was just a qu question that if you can give it to us, then we can reflect it in the report. Um, just on it, yeah. how this has worked, because we we called it out in past JCPC reports as a really good idea that that we'd bundled them. Then the other thing, just for those who haven't been on it, is um, there was a move to the capital side of the police department and the fire department being under Jeremiah so that 
when we're looking at police and fire, we get everything but the building so that he's reporting on those buildings, not just the other town buildings. So I, I also thought, thought that uh, the pol police chief and fire chief both said they really liked it, that that had happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so It takes the pressure off of them. Yeah. And it just allows me to keep focusing on the, the facility side of things. So I, I think that's it, unless I see another hand go up. I didn't. Um, uh, Dave, Dave wants to weigh in. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, thanks, Kathy. I'll be really quick. I just wanted to put kind of an exclamation point on the chiller on at APD. I think Jeremiah did a good a good job of outlining that. We've had some productive discussions with Sandy and the finance team on that, but um, clearly it's a, you know, it's a dynamic situation that uh, has escalated in cost. And I think um, talking with Rob Mora and talking with Jeremiah, the, you know, the existing unit is, is dead. It is not coming back. It's not a good investment for us, but the challenge is, you know, um, it's going to take quite a while to get a new unit in there. And this reminding the committee that this is a 24 our 365 day a year operation at APD. And so we're gonna to have to begin chilling that building probably in the next four to six weeks is my guess. So we're we're gonna to need to do something there temporarily that will have a cost. Um, but I think Jeremiah did a good, out, uh, a good job outlining that we should, if we're gonna invest that much money that it should be something that is, um, um, uh, not using fossil fuel and and greener than the current uh, technology we're using there. So um, I think in terms of a priority, that that clearly is a high priority for, for us here. So I appreciate uh, uh, you hearing that from Jeremiah and myself. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Sarah, I see your hand went up. Yep. Yeah, yeah, just to follow up to what uh, Dave, um, does that, I, I guess Jeremiah said it would take 18 months to get a new chiller like the one that's dead or updated version that sh should i infer that the heat pumps or whatever you want instead those are readily available and you could install that this later this summer or or do you need a temporary solution no matter what uh for something that size so that the the, the, it, the it'll still be a chiller um, so it, it's just it's just a heat pump chiller, so it has some additional technology in it. Um, if it was uh, strictly VRF, that that three million dollar, uh, I think some of that equipment is a, a bit more available. Um, but this these really large pieces of equipment um, just they they just don't have them sitting around anymore, unfortunately. So so you're going to have to have a temporary. Correct. Is that okay? Okay, thank you. Yep. And, and I've looked into the temporaries and we're probably somewhere in the tune of 10 to $12,000 per month. So assuming that we're going to be cooling from, you know, maybe May 1st to, you know, sometime in September, I guess, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's a lot. Hi everybody. I don't know who's taking minutes, but I'm noting that I got here at 5.03. <laughs> Hi, Anna. Hi, Jeremiah. Hi, Dave. Hi, everybody. And we we now have uh, acknowledged that you're here and we can hear you. <laughs> uh, thanks. And since no one volunteered, I had to volunteer. So we, we will need a minute taker next time. <laughs> but Sandy. Jeremiah, does that mean that um, I think there's 800,000 is down here as uh, plan to be borrowed. Does that mean that you would need money, some cash, frankly, uh, I don't know, X number of months of chilling uh, to pay for that uh, at some dollar figure and then some different amount to be borrowed to buy the whole new system. Well, so I, su I suppose I've been looking at, at the ask as uh, one whole piece in, in, a, in a way. So I have the the 450 or we're, we're i'm looking at that 450 that that was borrowed um that was uh, a capital um that was funded yeah as 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 a uh, that's that's my starting point that that gets me uh all my design work that gets me 
uh, at the start of construction and we can probably look at demolition, but that also helps me with that temporary chiller as we're moving forward. I don't know how much each okay, that, piece is fine. each that, piece is going to be. That's fine. Thank you. I, I can follow yeah. up on okay, more questions. That that answers my question. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you know, so it, since I'm taking notes, so it's you've got a piece of money that tides you over this temporary phase, and the eight hundred is for the big, the big purchase. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Anna, um, I apologize. I am I coming in late. And so part of me wants to just wait and I'll go back and watch the recording, but I also really want to ask this question. So if it's been asked, just tell me it's already been asked and I can go back. Um, when you're looking at these roof replacements, uh, the police station roof is currently being done. And one of the things that has been uh, brought to my attention as a concern from folks is that no additional insulation has gone in to that roof. Um, and so, I'd, and I'm, I, I'm not asking about that project. I wasn't on JCPC. I wish someone had asked the question then, but I'm going to ask the question now for the remainder of these roof replacements. Um, I'd like to know how you're insulating these buildings better than they currently are insulated, given our sustainability goals, our energy goals, all of that. Uh, is there is that possible? And how is that included in this offer? And if it's a direct one for one replacement of the roof, what's the um, kind of what's the cost of if you I don't you. I don't know if you'd know this, but the cost differential in terms of adding insulation versus what we're losing in, in heating and, and cooling bills. Yeah, so that cost, cost differential, I, I don't know that I would be, be able to throw those figures okay. out there. Um, <laughs> it, for Just to speak to APD, that was looked at. Um, but, but ultimately we we determined that we can insulate, we can insulate from the inside. We don't need to put something on the outside and, and, and by insulating on the inside, adding insulation on the inside would actually, I, th I think would help the, the building, the energy efficiency of the building better than putting on it on the outside, uh, just given the way that the, that, that roof system is designed. Um, if we're looking at some of our flat roofs, typically that insulation is directly underneath the membrane. So if you're pulling up the membrane, you're more than likely that it's just part of it. It's typically part of the project. So if you're, if we can see down on some of those membrane roofs, you'll see all these little puddles and dips. That's where water's penetrated and it started to collapse that insulation. So it's, it's part of like the, the structure the, of the, the building and it will have to happen. Uh, but most certainly it is something that we'll look at. And I can assume that the, the R value of the member, or you're saying, so the, you're saying the membrane itself is, is acting as an insulator because of the way it's built or that there's insulation as part of that project, for example, on the, on the fire station. And I'm assuming that the yes. R value of it is higher. Like we're improving upon the insulate insulative properties. The, you, we will absolutely tr do our best to, okay. to make it code compliant or not better. <laughs> um, which kind of gets me, Jeremiah. I know that you work closely with Stephanie Chagrello often. Um, yes. I, I'd love to know that these projects are not, not vetted, that it's not the right word, but I think you're probably the person that has the most area that, that ties in so closely with our climate action sustainability goals. And so I'd love to know if that's something that is part of your process that you're bringing these projects to her to ask, is there something more that her eyes know that we haven't seen? Um, is that a partnership that happens for, for most things that you're doing or for everything that you're doing? Yep. Yep. We, we meet, we meet reg regularly and okay. um, uh, we discuss it. I, I've bopped around a corner and said, Stephanie, I'm buying flooring. Should I think about the sustainability when I'm buying flooring? <laughs> it, it's, it's, so it's, it's really, I feel like it's ingrained and, in, and in, so it, it doesn't have to be these big mechanical systems or, or the energy, you know, I'm, I consider our, these different types of sustainability, um, uh, or, or, or this green, you know, aspect, um, for all things. And that's why that's, I illustrated an earlier um, with flooring. Mm -hmm. I, I would love to update our floors because they are chipping and, and showing wear, but I also want to do it in a, in a meaningful way. So we're not using all of these chemicals. It's, it's a, a very easy product to clean. That's, that's just, it'll, it'll reduce all the chemicals in the building. It's, it, it's helpful for me. It's less work, um, but it's also helpful for all of the individuals that, that are in there. 
I appreciate that, Jeremiah, and I, I appreciate all the efforts you're taking. It's it's something I, I personally don't find the form to be as thorough as it could be with that particular question. And so I appreciate you sharing that you're working closely with Stephanie. Thank you all. Yeah. So an honor that didn't, just so you know, didn't repeat, but one of the things Jeremiah showed us in the North Amherst fire station is the insulation is a wreck. And the effort in that separate piece of month is insulate and fix the roof. So it's it's a double um, that he and he he well, well, we can all look at the slide back. He provided a very useful picture when he said a wreck. It's it's literally fully it falling did down. no justice to what the what it was in, <laughs> when Thanks, you were standing I, underneath it. <laughs> I just pulled it up, so I'll I'll take a look. Thank you. <laughs> So if there are no other questions for Jeremiah, we can say thank you very much. And and by the way, if if out of this something occurs to you, if you send it in to Athena, she she just will send it to whoever uh, the questions for. And similarly, if you have a question before the next presentation and you have time to write it up and send it in. Uh, the presentation can sometimes address the issues just um, that were raised in your mind when you were reading it. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you all. So Sandy, I think we're to you now. Um, and he sent us, you know, a new table that shows us what, Sarah? You can't hear? I, I haven't received anything. I, I haven't received anything in the last week. Oh, it it it's in the packet. So oh, we can oh I see. Okay. okay, he can pull it up. Yeah. Okay. So I, in general, um, the practice has been not every piece of what you're going to be seeing is sent out. It's okay. just dumped in the packet. But we, we can do a somewhat better job of notifying you that additional information has been put in. But it's it's a summary table um, that is put together that shows us how much money we have to spend. There we go. Okay. Um, just do this too. So I think you can um, see this table. Uh, I'm going to show you this table. I want to point out it says draft, draft, draft right at the bottom uh, because everything I'm showing you right now is going to change. This doesn't mean anything, but it's a first step. So uh, I think uh, essentially what it's showing is that at this point in the process, we have uh, a difference between the amount of resources we have and amount of uh, projects people are asking for of about $2.3 million. And that carries through for the next, next year, goes down in FY27, goes way up in 28. And we actually have a surplus in 29. So we have about $10.5 million more in requests than we have money over five years. Having said that, I would also say that this is a draft and very preliminary because um, one, I am still waiting to get debt information. Uh, in other words, what the projections are for debt. Uh, Sonia, has been working on that, um, but she was not around this week. Um, so I was not a, I was not able to get any updated information from her. I looked at some of her spreadsheets that we share, but I clearly have to ask her about what's in those uh, because there are just some ambiguities in them that I need clarified. Um, so that is one thing, just getting what those numbers are. And that's going to mean a couple of things. There are, are assumptions that are built into this from a year ago about what projects we were going to borrow for uh, this spring and would therefore affect um, the FY25 cash flow that I know are different than what 
the assumptions were a year ago. There were some things that um, I think, for example, there was a fire truck that had been authorized for, mo for money to be barred for um, that we're not going forward with at this time. Um, and so we're not borrowing for it. We may bar it for it a year from now. Um, so they're just things like that that are going to affect these bottom line numbers. There are also a number of projects on this list. For example, doing all these roofs for half a million dollars. Um, my gut feeling is that a project that is as big as that uh, is something that in, in the other communities where I've worked, we would borrow for that. We'd borrow, frankly, for anything over $100,000. Um, and I just need to go back and look at what Amherst has done with these things to see if that would be consistent with previous capital plans or whether, uh, because I think, frankly, that is something that I did when I was here. But if over the last seven years, there's been a change in what we borrow for versus what we pay cash for, I want to keep the relative amount of borrowing consistent uh, because it has implications both for the current year capital plan and frankly, for the future capital plan. So uh, all of which is to say, there are some fairly big questions out there that um, I don't have the answers to and mostly it's all, all around borrowing. Um, there have been some minor changes uh, as we've met with departments asking them what things they can put off, or as Jeremiah just said, there's a truck, for example, that he mentioned that should be put off a year. Um, some of those things don't need to be put in. Um, so that's where I am on it. I think by next week, I'll have a chance to talk to Sonia to get those debt numbers nailed down uh, and to be able to finish this plan and also present to you uh, a plan uh, that shows it was the last page of the JCPC plan last year that shows um, what our existing debt is for which projects. So um, that that's where we are with that. Any questions about this so far? Kathy? Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting to see others, but um, I think this is great. And just so everyone understands. I mean, Sandy was talking on the actual debt, that 2.994, that's the number you said. That's, that's a, a shaded number right now. We'll, we'll come up with that. Um, and then the projected debt is from the past. So there is a, up at top under between the funding and then the spending, there's a 2.7 million borrowing. Is that that's maybe we're borrowing for a certain amount. I'm just, it, the question is, what is that number? That's the total of the things that are listed now as being borrowed versus um, being paid for in cash. And okay. it doesn't reflect the cash flow number because it's just the total amount of borrowing. What will be reflected in that down the road is how much, what the yearly cost in future years of each of those borrowings, but it gives you some sense of the total number of projects for which borrowing is a projected source. So I don't think we've received yet. So when, when we first met, there was a long list that actually added up to $10 million, 10 million, 10.1 million, but nothing was shaded yet in that on potential borrowing. So just, so you've been working on a, some things are earmarked potentially for borrowing. That yes. it would add up to that two seven. Yes. So, for example, the eight hundred thousand for the chiller is marked as is borrowing. Okay. Okay. Now that's helpful. So we know where where we're having to aim to cut. Um, uh, you know, on the balancing. So, so that was my um, question on that middle piece. So, I think that would be helpful when you're ready to share it. You know, at least the tentative, because the if we're looking at the longer list and saying where does the two point three come from, some of it, where might it come from in terms of cuts? You've already got some big things slated for borrowing, so that's not going to help us on the two point three. <laughs> you know, it's. Uh, 
so so that's helpful. Then the other is, I think, um, uh, what what you you and Guilford both mentioned that this our state aid money we we got in it. I know we got a note from Joe Comerford that there was another two hundred or three hundred thousand. And what I don't remember is whether it's for the current fiscal year or for the next fiscal fiscal year. Um, so it doesn't really matter other than um, the optics of how much we're doing here and then whether we're gonna use some ARPA money. So my my final question is um, not gonna be one you can answer because I know Paul is still working on it, is if there are some really critical things that we can't make this work that are capital and they're urgent, uh, have they already been flagged as potential ARPA money, you know, so I know this is part of our capital budget right now. So just trying to think of if if we absolutely have to do them. And a lot of what Jeremiah said seemed fairly urgent. I mean, the, um, is, and you heard my comment on the, the one big one under DPW. Um, I have questions about it. You know, does it need to be this year is a question. So I'll, I'll stop my questions now because it's it it looks really bad when you go out a couple of years. So when we push off, um, you know, if we're not doing it, it's going to show up later. I, I guess, you know, the other one is when, when you get Sonia's numbers on debt, the Jones Library has now been voted on and there's some short-term interests that we're going to be um, absorbing. And someone probably has an estimate of that just to make sure if it's going to hit us in FY25 that it's in the actual debt line, you know, or the projected debt. Yes. Yeah. So there, there it, this spreadsheet has a bunch of formulas that try to take into consideration those things. So that $50,000 in FY25 eventually will have to be updated to make sure that that includes the right number for the Jones. Um, but I will just say that it's constructed so that it will capture that. It's just a matter of my now getting the right numbers to plug in. Thank you. Anna. So one of the other things, Sandy, that um, I am hoping you might be able to get for us, we mentioned it last time at the vehicle inventory. Yes. Uh, if, we, if we could get that, that would be great. Cause I think most of my questions for DPW and um, police and fire or well, and police are, uh, could be informed by that. Is that something that you have? I don't want to, am I asking? Am so, I asking so let me just okay. update you on the status of that. So I started working on it um, and I had thought that I could get one of the things that I think people like to see is the uh, the mileage on, for the vehicles year to year. And I thought they could get that all in one place. It turns out that I can't. I have to go to each of the departments and ask them. And um, that is on my list of things to do. I haven't done it yet, um, but I am compiling an up-to-date list of the, the vehicles um, and just, uh, I've been checking it against our insurance records. Um, so, all of which is to say, I thought I could get that to you right away. It's taking longer than I thought, but I know it's important and it's something uh, that uh, JCPC and I think the council likes to see. So I am continuing to work on it. I think, yeah, it, even if it's, I hear you on the mileage being a being a tough thing to get. I think if it's possible to get it for our next meeting, that would be um, great, even if it doesn't include the mileage. Uh, okay. Okay, that's good. I'm speaking for myself there, but I, I guess I'd love to see, you can just send it to me if you want to wait till everybody <laughs> mileage, but um, I'd love to just see, even if it just includes, you know, year purchased and things like that, that that's helpful. Sure. Thank you. And Anna, the Guilford presentation he made up, I was told no vehicles this year comment. <laughs> so um, when people see the vehicle list, you'll see why DPW has been particularly a focus of getting getting vehicle lists. They have a lot of them. Yeah, but I was going to say, I remember it from last time I was on JCPC. Um, Guilford said no vehicle. Sorry, what? Did, what? He, he said he, he yeah, he, he didn't have any, except for one $250,000 piece of equipment to plow sidewalks, he didn't have any trucks or others this year in his list at all. I mean, and he, he basically started out saying, I was told no vehicles this year. And so then showed his list. So 
I'm not, I'm not saying that we don't need the vehicle list, but that's been one that we were particularly focusing on, you know, how, how many of each of these do we have? So it would be great to get the list. I, I will say probably 10 years ago when I was here in a town meeting, I don't know if any of you was there at the time, but we did have, I did have to speak to town meeting about replacing a DPW truck. And we knew it was time to replace it because the steering wheel had come off in the hands of the person driving it. <laughs> so that did seem an urgent re request. Yeah, I, I hear that, Kathy, and I appreciate it. Um, when you look at the the kind of five year plan, though, they've got four trucks, five, at least five vehicles next fiscal year. So yeah. I think that's that's why that the vehicle the updated vehicle list is helpful is we're looking at a doozy of, of vehicles for them next year. So I, I'm trying to balance that and thank you. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm I'm not saying that the list isn't useful, but um fortunately fortunately or unfortunately, we don't have a huge number of vehicles to look at this year. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Um Athena sent, uh, did everyone see that she sent, um, she sent an updated agenda that's in the packet and it was switching the order of some of who we're going to see, see next week. Um, and we can, uh, I, I might be able to pull it up if I have it, but just pay attention to that because it'll be which, which of the pieces that we already have we're looking at. Um, and 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 again, what what the practice has been, you had that master list of these with little pieces of information, but we'll get a, a more focused list of specific items because some things are being dropped off that first big, big list that we had. Um, some things were dropped off, if you noticed from Jeremiah's. So uh, any other questions? Um, we we had uh, we were notified the the schools needed to the school people needed to be leaving. Um, I'm going to see whether we have any. We do have one public, um, but I will see if there are any public comments unless there are any other comments or questions from our group. I don't see any, so we're open for public comments if. If there are any, raise your hand. I'm not seeing a response. So I think with that, um, we, um, there was one other comment I wanted to make um, about the resident request. Um, I was asked to do this by someone who was listening. Um, we don't have to wait to make a recommendation on the resident request till we hear from departments, you know, on, it, it's not like they have a, a yes or no, we can independently decide whether we want to move these forward or not. And at some point they will be put into the larger buckets. So I, when I asked last time, whether there had been any conversations, it wasn't that that implied a sign off or not a sign off on it. Um, so I, I just wanted to make sure to clarify my questions. We're just um, hoping that some discussion had happened on them and the answers were yes for, for the projects. So I'm not seeing any hands up. So I think unless there's an objection, we're ready to adjourn. And uh, the meeting is adjourned and we will need no- Oh, Kathy, uh, Kathy. Yes. Yes. Kathy, did, did you want to approve the minutes that did you want to approve the minutes that Jean prepared? Um, uh, Athena, we we've had a practice unless people want to ch change it that I review, edit, and make them final. Um, so we don't have to vote on the minutes each time. But if people want to, if they are, they should be posted at this point. So if anyone has any changes, we can make them later. But Athena, we've been expediting JCPC to make. Sure, we just have time for projects. And he, he his minutes were amazingly thorough and I mainly formatted them a little bit rather than found anything missing. Um, so yes, Bob. 
Yeah, I just wanted to mention that uh, the KP Law has requested that we get a motion to adjourn in a second, okay. just instead, you know, to kind of make sure we, we uh, dot those I's and cross those T's. Okay. So uh, I see Anna's hand is up. So um, I will welcome a motion once we hear from Anna. <laughs> um, I just wanted to really quickly note, there's uh, excellent, excellent minutes. Um, my name is misspelled in one place uh, where it has two ends. It's okay. It happens. It was a slip of the, I know, I'm sure it's fine. Um, I just wanted to point that out in case there was confusion there. I, to my knowledge, there was no Anna in the meeting. Just, just me. Okay, Anna, uh, Thank we'll you. fix that. Thank you. So the minutes, yes, Jennifer. I move we adjourn. Second. And now we need to take a vote. Okay, um, I'll just go through as I see them on the screen. Jennifer? Yes. Kathy is a yes. Bob? Yes. Uh, Sarah? Yes. Eugene? Yes. Anna? Aye. Lee? Yes. And I think... Uh, it's unanimous. We are adjour adjourned. Uh, Jennifer, your hand is up. Is that just from before? Okay. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.